this moment in time, I'm going to call Brother Bobby Brooks up. He is going to be ministering us to us today. I'm so excited to hear what God has given him. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house this morning. Amen. Sound guys, I got a big mouth and a big voice. You may need to turn me down a little bit. Listen, I'm excited to be here and to have the opportunity this morning to pour into you what the Holy Spirit has been pouring into me the last few weeks. I want to say thank you to uh, Pastor and First Lady Nolan for giving us the opportunity and the privilege to minister to you today. Uh, I do want to encourage you to come back tonight, this evening, to be blessed. Uh, my wife, Kendra, will be preaching this morning. And uh, regardless of what happens this morning in this service, tonight will be, be even better. Amen. Because uh, she has an anointing upon her life and upon her ministry. Um, and I couldn't be more proud of her obedience and accepting the call that, ha that God has on her life. And if, uh, if you miss tonight, you, you're going to miss a uh, terrific uh, word from the Lord from her. Uh, some of you may not know who I am, but I'm John and Erlene Nation's self-proclaimed favorite son-in-law. Uh, we moved away from this area about 12 years ago and been in ministry full-time as pastors in North Carolina, Kentucky in the last five and a half years in the uh, state of West Virginia. Um, we are what some would refer to as revitalizers, uh, following long-term pastors where God has used us to be able to blow a fresh wind of Pentecost back over the embers of the church once again and have those flames burning once again. Do, do you remember what I'm talking about? When, 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 when people used to come to church just to watch you burn? Come on now. You, you know what I'm talking about? The, the, the power of God would move inside the church so powerful. People didn't understand what was going on, but they knew it was authentic, and they knew it was real, and they, they, they knew the drunkard wasn't drunk anymore. They knew the sick wasn't sick anymore. Amen? Are you awake this morning? Listen, you're not here this morning because you like the people. And you're not here this morning because you like the preaching of, of Pastor Nolan's messages. Because there's other people outside of this church that you like. And there's other place, other preachers and ministers outside of this church that you like listening to. You're here today at the Russellville Church of God because it's part of God's plan for your life. Amen. And, and, and we are unapologetically Pentecostal. So I, I want you to worship with me as I preach today. Amen? Amen? Listen, we've maintained a mantra or a vision everywhere that we've gone, and, and, and it's very simple, and it's very true. And no matter where you are, whether you're in church or whether you're at the workplace or whether you find yourself walking through Walmart, it's still the same. Everywhere that you go, be living proof of a loving God to a watching world. There are people that's looking for something that's real and something that, also, that is authentic. A real, authentic move of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I, I don't need and I don't even want a feel-good experience when I come to church. What I want is a demonstration of His power being poured out among His church. Amen? Listen, I, when I come to church, I want to see souls that are saved and lives that are changed, amen. I, I want the lost to be found, the sick to be healed, amen. I want the addict to be delivered. I want the family to be restored, amen. Anybody in here want the same thing this morning? Hey, if you come into the house of the Lord this morning expecting to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, say amen. Amen. Listen, many of you don't know this, but today and for the last several years, I have lived with my right coronary artery 100% blocked from the very top to the very bottom, not just a section of it, but the entire artery 100% blocked. The bottom rear muscle on the back side of my heart completely dead. I operate every day with about 35% heart function. In July of 2020, I was admitted to the hospital and learned that I had two major heart attacks between Thursday night and Saturday morning. I was actively having a heart attack. There's all kinds of heart attack that causes all kinds of things. Mine they refer to as the widow maker. I spent almost two weeks in the critical care unit and was later back in the pulpit two weeks after that against my doctor's orders and, of course, against my wife's orders. 
Listen, I'm not lazy. I'm not a lazy pastor. I'm not a lazy man. I, I, I believe that we ought to be busy doing what God has called us to do and purpose for us to do. Amen? From the very beginning, I've always had this mindset of what's next. I'm ready to go on to the next. I'm ready to finish what I got going on and get on to the next thing. I'm having a heart attack. Great. What's next? You, 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 you're in the third hour laying on the heart cath table, and, and it's supposed to only been a 45-minute procedure. Okay, what, what's, what's next? Now, you're in the ICU, and you're telling me I'm lucky to be alive. I almost died twice. Okay, what's, what, what's next? I, I'm not a lazy pastor. If I'm sitting, I feel like I'm wasting a little bit of time, amen, that I could be doing something more productive for God. And some of you are the same way. You're stubborn. <laughs> I'm stubborn. I just feel like that I need to be about God's business. I feel like the church needs to be about God's business. I feel like we ought to be doing what God has called and purposed in our heart and in our lives to do. So what's next? I don't know about you, but I, I like to get things finished. Anybody like to finish some things in here? No, no one likes stuff halfway done. That's, that's your wife. That's where you say Amen. <laughs> So we place a lot of effort, a lot of energy trying to finish whatever we're doing. Finish the yard, finish the project. If, if I can get through this test, I'll be finished. If I can get through this trial, I'll, I'll be finished. If, if I can get through this challenge, I'll be finished. If I can get through this circumstance, I'll be finished. If I can get through this issue, I'll be finished. It'll be finished and I'll never have to go through it ever again. And as I was studying and preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, it may be finished, but it's not over. My heart attack may be finished, but, but it's not over. I still had to go three days a week for 18 weeks for cardiac rehab. I, I still have to watch what I eat. I still have to be careful where I go. I, I still need to, to wear this nitroglycerin that I have around my neck. I still have 100% blockage in the right coronary artery of my heart. I'm still at a high risk for another heart attack. My heart attack, though, may be finished but it's not over. The, the battle and the circumstances and the challenges that I face in life, they're, they're, they're not over with yet. And for many people today, there, there has been some damage and there has been some hurt and, and there are church hurts and there is church pains and there is brokenness and there are some things that linger on once some things are finished, amen? You have to deal with some things. Things that make us feel that we're not as strong as we used to be. That we're not as able to do some things that we were once able to do. That, that we can't open up and, and, and trust like we once were able to open up and we were once able to trust. It, it, whatever it is in your life, it may be finished, but God says it's not over. And when I began to think about this, I started to question God. I said, God, what do you mean that it may be finished, but it's not over? I began to ask the Holy Spirit to help me to understand how can it be finished and it not not be over. And immediately my mind was taken to a few stories in the Bible. And as I began to read and as I began to study, I started to get excited. And these are stories that you are very familiar with. And in Luke chapter 5, you, you, you remember the story of Peter fishing all night and catching nothing. He, and he came in and he cleaned his necks and he put everything away. They were finished, amen. And then Jesus comes by and he said, go out into the deep and cast your nets. See, Peter was like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. We've been here all night. We fished all night. We didn't catch anything. We're finished. We, we didn't get what we expected to get. We didn't pull in what we expected to pull in. We're finished. And Jesus come by and he says, listen, you may be finished, but it's not over. Go out into the deep and cast your nets. And the Bible tells us that they obey. And they went out and they cast their nets. And they started to pull up a huge catch of fish that they had to call into the shore and get other people to come in to help them get these nets. Amen. Listen, many times we want to throw in the towel, hang up the nets and say that it's finished, that there's nothing more out there for me to catch, that there's nothing more out there for me to do, that there's no more chance for me, no hope that things will ever get any better again. But then Jesus shows up. Amen. I said when Jesus shows up, it may be finished and you may feel finished. You 
may be ready to quit. You may be in a place where you see no way out. But I come to tell you today that when Jesus shows up, it's not over. Amen? Listen, I began to think about the woman with the issue of blood found in Luke chapter 8 and how she had spent all of her money and tried all of the doctors and all of the medications that they had to offer him. And her life seemed to be lost and, and locked down and unable to see her family and quarantined, if you will, to an area outside of the town where the unclean were to remain. The law was in those days that if she was to enter into the city unclean, that she would violate the quarantine and that she could be killed by being stoned to death. She had, all, she had done all that she knew to do. She had gone everywhere she knew to go, and she was finished. It was finished. This was going to be her life. This was going to be the end. This is how the rest of her days were going to be played out and lived out, separated and isolated from friends and family. She was finished until a man named Jesus came to town. Amen. Listen, she had heard all the things that he had done, the words that he had spoken, the miracles that had followed him. And she had determined in her heart and in her spirit that if Jesus was who they say he was, and if Jesus could do what they said that he could do, then the doctors and the pharmacy may be finished, but it wasn't over yet. Amen. Because Jesus was walking by. And you know the story. The Bible says that she ran and she fell and she touched the hem of his garment and virtue left him, amen. She was not just healed, but the Bible says that she was made whole. Listen, I want to tell someone this morning that there may be some people in your life that has given up on you. And there may be some people that think you'll never be any more than what you are right now. And there may be some that tell you that you're finished, that your ministry is finished, that your life is finished, that there is no hope, that there is no more opportunity. But I came by to tell you today that until Jesus shows up, it's not over. Amen? Listen, I'm tired of people hiding and, 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 and listening to what everybody else has to say, right? Listen, we, we hide in the corners of this world, scared and defeated. And, but what we really need to do, we need to allow the holy boldness to rise up on the inside of us, amen, and start running after Jesus the way this woman ran after Jesus, amen? I want to remind you today that just one touch changed her entire life. It changed every, healed every sickness and every disease that she had in her body. Amen. And I want to tell you that God, that same God, still has that same power in his hands and that same power in his voice. Amen. That whether he reaches and touches or he speaks from his mouth. Amen. That he can still save you and secure you and heal you and deliver you and restore you. The situation may appear like it's finished and you may feel like like you're finished, but until Jesus shows up in your life and in your circumstance, in your situation, it's not over, amen. Someone to give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Listen, one of the greatest miracles, one of my favorite stories in the Bible was surrounded by an old boy named Lazarus, found in John chapter 11. Many of you guys know this story. Lazarus was sick. The Bible says his sister sent for Jesus to come to him while he was still sick because they believed that if Jesus could just touch him, that he would be healed. But the Bible tells us that Jesus did not arrive on time like they thought that he would arrive. Lazarus, by this time, Jesus gets there, is dead. He's not only dead, but he's been dead for four days, laid in a tomb, and that tomb's sealed by now. The Bible tells us, though, that when Jesus arrived, that he asked for them, where is he? They said, Jesus, he's dead. It's finished. He's been dead for four days. They, 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 they were telling Jesus, not, not only is he dead, and not only is he finished, but, but it has been finished for four days now, and by this point in time, he stinks. Jesus said, take me to him. 
And he got there and he told him to roll the stone away. And the Bible says that Jesus called Lazarus by name. And Lazarus got up from the dead and came walking out of the tomb with dead man clothes on. Amen. I'm telling you, it may be finished, but it's not over. Amen. It may seem like it's been this way your entire life. It may seem like it will always be this way for the rest of your life. It may even seem all hope of a better life life is completely finished for you. But I need someone to understand this morning that Jesus is on his way. He has not shown up in your circumstance yet. He has not showed up in your situation yet. And until Jesus shows up, it's not over. Amen. I don't care how dead and gone it may seem. I don't care how long it has been this way. I don't care how messy or how stinky the situation may present itself. When Jesus shows up, shows up and he begins to speak and he begins to call you by name. The dead things and the lost things and the finished things begin to respond and all the dead bones begin to come back together again in all the original places and what seemed to be lost and what seemed to be defeated and what seems to be finished will once again rise up one more time into the great army of the Lord. Amen. Listen, I don't want you to leave here today thinking about all those things that used to be and all of those things that could have been. Listen, if Jesus hasn't shown up in your situation yet, it's not over. Listen, the devil thought he had me dead twice. Hello? He thought he had me dead twice. He he, 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 he said, I got him now. It, It is finished. He is finished. His ministry is finished. The church that he's growing is finished. But there was still a remnant left in the church. Amen. Come on now. There was still a remnant left in the church. There was still a remnant of Holy Ghost filled people that showed up in the parking lot of Berkeley Hospital. Amen. And they began to pray and they began to sing and they began to worship outside of the hospital door and they began to call upon the name of the great physician. Amen. The devil was down there telling him, he said, listen, you're too late. Blood flow has already stopped for too long. The damage is already too late. The devil said, he is finished. But no, 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 no. I wasn't finished. Amen. God stepped in and he says, no, he's not finished yet. I'm not done with him yet. My purpose has not been completed in him yet. He has not done everything that I've anointed and called and appointed for him to do. Amen. And I want you to know today that the devil may have been attacking you. And he may be attacking your family. He may be even attacking this church. Amen. And it may look like it's finished, but it's not over yet. Amen. Listen, he may be coming in after you. And it may seem like it's all over. And it may be seem like, 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 like it's finished. But I want you to look up here today. Because I am living proof that when Jesus shows up, it's not over. Amen. Listen, I still believe that he is still in the miracle working business in our life and in our church. And I believe that he can still make a way where there seems to be no way. And all that you and I have to do is let God be God of our life. And when the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, do we have to trust that God is still more than able to raise up a standard against him and bring you through the challenges and bring you through the struggles, amen, that you may be facing, amen. I want you to know that God is still God enough to rescue you from the hands of death and to raise you up with a greater anointing and a greater testimony. Amen. I wish someone would just raise your hands if God has ever touched you and God has ever blessed you. Go ahead, give him some praise this morning. Amen. We all went through COVID. This will be familiar to you. I know you guys live stream and I got a small window to stay in. My other church, they, they couldn't keep up with me, so they had to back out and to keep up with me. But we all went through COVID. My church shut down in March of March 15th of 2020. We were running about 350, 380 people. And uh, my church shut down. But back in November before that, I was praying, getting ready, and 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me and it says, don't let what you see distract you from what I've said. There's still a plan. There's still a purpose. And there's still a promise. I said, that's really good. I should preach it one day. But I never really much thought about it much more. And then in January, that came back to me again. Don't let what you see distract you from what I said. There's still a plan. There's still a purpose. There's still a promise. And then COVID hit, started getting bad. And on that Sunday morning, March 15th, the last Sunday I preached. And in that service, the Holy Spirit spoke. Don't let what you see distract you from what I said. There's still a plan. There's still a purpose. And there's still a promise. Amen. Listen, we, 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 we cannot let what we see distract us from what God has said over our life and over our family and over our church. Listen, there, there is still a promise. But by that, I mean don't let what you see have more power than what God has said. Come on now. Don't let what you see have more power than what God has said. What God has said can and will overcome everything that you see. Amen? Listen, we can't get that. Hear me today, church. I may never go ahead and get on that piano. I told you I wasn't a long-winded preacher. When I went to college, we went to Lee University. Dr. Gerald Doffey was one of our theology professors there. He says, when you get up to preach, don't tell them everything you know. He said, their mind can't contain what their butt can't withstand. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I find myself sometimes counting ceiling tiles or how many lights are blowing out in the chandeliers in the church, you know. I get distracted. But hear me today, church. I may not ever get to preach here again, but I want you to be reminded of this. There is still power in the name of Jesus. There's still power in the name of Jesus. I, I still believe there's power in the name of Jesus. That there's sinner, that there's no sinner that's too lost. That there's no pain that is too deep. That there's no valley that's too wide. That there's no miracle that's too difficult. That there is no marriage too broken. That there is no child that has gone too far. That there is no addiction too strong. That there is no chain that he cannot break. That there is no door that he cannot shut or no window that he cannot open. That there is no page that he cannot turn. That there is no river that he cannot cross. That there is no mountain that he cannot climb. That there is no mind that he cannot change. That there is no sin that he cannot watch. And there is no soul that he cannot save. Amen. There is nothing, nothing nothing, nothing that he cannot do for you today. Stand with me this morning. Listen, church. Every eye closed. Every head bowed. In this room, there's no doubt Listen, we've not been coming to this church very long. But I've watched many of you leave your seat and come to this altar. Even when there wasn't an altar call provided or an invitation given. Because in your life and in your circumstance, you need God to move. You need God to touch. You need God to heal. Some of you got the reports that you didn't want, the ones that you didn't expect. I come to tell you today that I got the report that I wasn't going to live, but yet here I am. I'm telling you, God can do it this morning. God can do whatever it is that you need for him to do this morning.